Welcome to The Contrarians and tonight's topic, bands that we've become disillusioned with as we get older. Panel's here, we're ready, let's do it. Welcome to The Contrarians and wow, we've had a shaky start to this episode, but we are here. (laughs) If you only knew, ladies and gentlemen, the topic for today, bands that we are disillusioned with as we get older. So I'm sure we all have something like that. We do want to hear from you in the comments below, but uh, I want to welcome Philip, Tom, and the Elder of Rock today. And we're just going to have a good old loose discussion. I don't know how many people have prepared, how many bands or artists, but (laughs) we're going to go an hour or slightly less than an hour and we're just going to have a good discussion like i said we do want to hear from you in the chat and uh so here we go um and this was uh philip's uh topic so i'm going to let him start us off so uh, i guess we'll just go one one and one and just keep looping around all right yeah yeah, just just a loose loose discussion it's loose we we don't need to start listing exactly no. one two three four or five. No right? no no so, no. Just throw them out there. Yeah. So my idea around this was, um, uh, you know, how we talk sometimes about the mission of the Contrarians is to turn on to turn people on to to um, to new music to exactly anything they don't know. Well, maybe this is the opportunity to turn people off to something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In other words, just, <laughs> well, well. Th- this is the most subjective. At least I'm gonna get today. Like, like I don't want anyone to misunderstand how like my tastes have changed over time. Um, this is all just the way we see things differently now. As you get older, sometimes as time goes by, you kind of fall out of love with some bands or some artists. You mm-hmm. realize that maybe you were very enthusiastic about them for a certain time and now they are just somehow less appealing to you they're less sexy for you i don't know um and you just see things in a totally different uh, eye you know so so um i kind of you know i i i have fallen out of love with certain artists and bands and i see them releasing new stuff and i just i try to listen and to like what they release today and i don't feel it anymore so that's kind of what i was interested in and what i was like wanted to explore with with other people as well all right cool sounds like a plan well start us off let's hear it give us your... uh okay well um i will not start with my most contrarian uh okay. because uh, well i'm a bit concerned i'm gonna get hell for this uh but i'll just start first with um, a guitar player who i used to really admire a lot and i thought he was really uh, top of the top but today i think totally differently and that is zach wild mm. um I mean, the guy is, is huge. He's very well known. He's He is, of course, an excellent guitar player. You know, I'm not here to say that someone is objectively somehow bad, you know, or good or anything like that. Um, he's known, of course, for having played with Ozzy on some of his most uh, commercially successful albums. Uh, his solo career, of course, with Black Label Society, where they play this sort of stoner, sludgy um, doom metal. And uh, now he is uh, he has replaced, he's in the... For more than a year, he's been playing with the band that's now called Pantera, where he's replacing Dime Bag Daryl. Uh, here's the thing. So when I was much younger, uh, and right now I'm 40, um, when I was much younger, I really, really admired him. I thought that his shredding technique was incredible. And I was, you know, my, my jaw would always fall to the floor with his, with his particular brand of shredding. And of course, with that, those signature pinch harmonics that he's well known for, Everyone who learns the guitar at some point tries to imitate him and his style of doing those pinch harmonics. Um, And he has a sound that's very loud and heavy. He plays down tune at like drop C or even drop B, which is already really, really sludgy and heavy. Um, And uh, he, you know, he's a squealer as far as as the shredding goes as well, you know? So as I get older, however, and uh, regardless of me playing the guitar or not, I started to realize that maybe this guy for me in the end is just a one trick pony. Um, he does those pinch harmonics, they're cool, but after a while their uh, their charm starts to fade off in a way I find. 
and it's kind of the same thing over and over. Uh, I still like some of his riffs, especially with Black Label Society, because I like the sort of bluesy side of things. But after a while, you realize also that this genre of music doesn't offer much in terms of variety. So you kind of start playing the same riffs over and over, the same patterns over and over. And I start to get the feeling that maybe he's lacking in inspiration and creativity because he is a guitar player who basically does this particular brand of shredding, this kind of alternate picking that he does, which after a while sounds again the same and the same over and over. The pinch harmonics over and over again. His solos are always just loud <laughs> and very fast. And he does the bending that sounds like you're choking a chicken. Uh, at least that's what it sounds to me now. Like right? it, it used to sound to me really cool. You know, that really squealy kind of, uh, you know, bending mm -hmm. that he does. But I, at some point I watched a video of the uh, fusion guitarist, Frank Gambale, and he was talking about the importance of the blues. And he talks then also about some shredders who do this kind of squealing where it sounds like you quote unquote, choking a chicken. And I couldn't unhear that from there on. And all I hear now with Zach Wilde is someone who's choking a chicken, loud pinch harmonics, the same riffs over and over, and a type of alternate picking that is lax in subtlety. It's like very loud, very fast. And that's it for me. And now that he's also replaced, um, now that he's playing in Pantera, uh, in the shoes of Diane Bagdaro, who I think was a unique, and I still think he is a unique, a heavy metal guitar player. Uh, I don't feel that he's doing a great job in in uh, in 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 covering the stuff of Dimebag Daryl. I think that it's very difficult. Uh, kudos to him for for making an effort and for for doing a pretty good a pretty solid job overall. But I don't feel that he has the kind of feel and subtlety for that. He's very loud. He's very shreddy and. Maybe also as you get older, you start to fall out of love with many shredders, uh, which is why I tend to gravitate towards many melodic uh, players. But I'll talk about more about that later with my other picks. So I don't know what you, what, what, what you guys think. Well, about... first of all, Philip, yeah. I wanna... please don't hold back. <laughs> um, try to let us know what how you feel about this uh, player. I'm just saying. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I don't you, know. I'm going to keep quiet. I might piss people off. So I don't. You know, when I was much guys... younger, I even bought one of his um, distortion, his overdrive pedals, which has the bullseye on it. Was it and just I'm noise? Like, was and that I'm like, this say? doesn't do much. It doesn't do much in terms of, of, of giving me any gain, any power. It What's sounded like, like a little know? big muff. Is probably what just look cool. Like. Yeah. <laughs> And, and we change choice, we yeah. change as we get older too right when, when you're 13 you're like yeah fast and loud and yeah. pinched harmonics and yeah and now, and now you're like ah yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah it seems like that he oh. might reach for that when he doesn't like know what else to do or yeah. something you know he kind of oh, i'll do the pinch harmonics here i don't you know and and uh yeah just kind of wish you would maybe think out think it out a bit more or, or realize when he's doing that but then maybe he's afraid that's his distinct thing. And if he doesn't do it, people might say something, but I don't know. Well, you yeah. remember when Nettie Van Halen came on the scene and you're a kid? I'm just assuming everybody knows that moment. Yeah. Right? yeah. But when yeah. I first heard it, it was like something like you've never heard before. Yeah. Like yeah. the eruption solo was like something that and you've never heard it. It was like from outer space. Now you kind of listen to it and go, oh, yeah, it's eruption solo. Yeah. It's not as dazzling as it once was. It yeah. was yeah. Jimi Hendrix. Of course, I was too little, but people said when Jimi Hendrix, you know, came out on Monterey or whatever, it was like a spaceship had landed. No one ever played like Hendrix. You know, at the time, Eric Clapton wanted to throw in it. He was going to give it up. Mm. You know, <laughs> he couldn't believe Hendrix. Yeah, but it was know, like Hendrix one of those things. But I think when you're talking about these people that are shredders, I do think that it does tend to wear on a person. Yeah, and like Hendrix had a very cultural impact because he came during, uh, he, you know, he, in, in the 60s and with uh, Woodstock and everything. So like mm -hmm. when Hendrix is burning a guitar, you know, that has a big impact it does. On, on, a, on a higher sphere, you know? Right. But, but like... But he's, he was also melodic though. Well, he had soul to his playing. Yeah. His, yeah. his solos went somewhere. Well, I also think That's when he did the Star shred. Spangled Banner, people never heard any guitar make sounds like that. No. And, and so that was another thing, you know. Yeah. And, you know, Eddie Van Halen, you know, it wasn't like he would play something. 
a huge long solo or anything. You know, he kind of made his point and moved on. Some of these shredders just go on and on and on. Yeah. They like yeah. to hear themselves. Like Ingve. Ingve is just kind of the same way. It's like yeah. he was cool at first, and now it's just like yeah what <laughs> you know i was never one of those guys when ingve came out that i thought i just thought it was just okay you're fast but does your oh. solo say anything the thing is, right the but thing does, does it Ingve... does it touch me you know does it touch me right yeah like he seemed to have a little bit of that in the beginning because he seemed to play more for the song uh -huh. and now it just kind of when it's time for his time to solo he just shreds you know yeah but like it's... the thing about ingve is that when he did appear on the stage he was the only one to to like he basically took what blackmore did and he elevated to another level yeah. by bringing in a style of playing that is akin to the violin with paganini mm -hmm. this neoclassical thing that was like That's a true. monumental thing that he did there not just the speed at which he could play but of course today when you when you hear that today you know it's it's like please please just stop you know slow down stop you know just just play differently yeah. play play with a different guitar play with a different sound what do you let me mm -hmm. ask you this do you think it's because these some of these guitar players never really grow one of the greatest this has turned into a guitar show that's fine <laughs> one of the greatest guitar players and may he rest in peace is jeff beck and i brought this up before because you look at jeff back back in 68 and you looked at, at jeff beck in I don't know, 2022 whatever 2017 whatever the guy was constantly evolving and his technique and to watch him play absolutely brilliant he's the oh, one of the few guitar players that i can go on record to say that this guy was it because he totally evolved his style was constantly changing yeah and he was a he was a joy to watch yeah. you know his vibrato techniques and the way he would use the bar and all that Oh, yeah, some, something Beck. about Jeff Holy Beck. Shit. Something about his touch. You know, he had that. He didn't use a pick, and he there was something about his touch yeah. that was so unique. What was it? Do I have that? Uh, that's the thing. Like when you when you are younger, you are just listening to you know Eddie Van Halen and, and Zach Wild. But as I get older, I start listening more to Robert Fripp, and I'm like, wait a second, this guy has an interesting way of being constantly yeah uh, informed in every age, and to do something that is kind of more topical today and and he he is transforming constantly it's 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 more interesting absolutely completely yeah. agree Rip's another that. player that uh always amazing to hear always yeah. amazing and, and i don't and think like you get... said you change with the times yeah too. he doesn't get as much credit too i don't no. think no, yeah no, he's no, kind no, of underrated much. he's yeah. yeah he's not yeah. side to very many as very many uh people's influences which is a shame well, ladies and gentlemen, we can't get much looser than this. So <laughs> bear with us. We are getting through it. But hey, this is a great topic. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, fellow. Go well, yeah. I'm going to throw it over to Tom. Tom, throw us something out that we're going to have to discuss. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to go big. If I'm going to go, I mean, I, if you're talking about artists that, you know, when I think disillusioned, I also think kind of like love, hate. It's kind of like. You know, you used to, and, it, and I think this is a great topic, Philip, by the way, this is because it's so true. Yeah, it's like, guys, you know, it, there's a lot of artists like that. And a lot of times it's like you hear about people, you know, let's say someone getting a divorce, right? It doesn't happen overnight. It's like, it's like a million things that start happening one after another, after another. And finally you're like, I'm done. Right. And it's like, it's kind of like that with music artists too, where you're like, it's just like, I love, I love, one time I did love this artist and then they just did this and they did that and they did this and they did that. And it's like one after, and after a while you're like, okay, I, I'm starting to, like you said, I don't know when it happened, but I kind of fell out of love a little bit with this artist. And that kind of happened to me with Neil Young. Oh. Um, where I, I just think his run of 70s at records is impeccable. I, I From 19, you know, Buffalo Springfield, 1968 until, you know, or 67 until, mm -hmm. until 79, Russ Never Sleeps is like, wow, what an incredible run. But then after that, it, he really starts testing your patience as a fan. Um, he does all of these like genre experiments in the eighties and he's, he kind of, you know, admittedly he wasn't his, he had a lot of family stuff going on in the eighties and he wasn't as focused on his music and you could kind of tell, I mean, it's the music got, it just got more and more diluted. And then, you know, he had a little bit of a, a, a sort of a comeback in the early nineties with the whole like freedom and, and, um, and harvest moon. And there was a couple records that were pretty good in the early nineties or whatever. And then, then he kind of went back into like, 
he just made all these records that became like you could tell nobody was saying no to him. He would just go into the studio, mm -hmm. be like, I got three chords and a couple words. I'm going to record, hit record. And it's like, you know, after a while, your patience is like, come on, Neil, this is not your best work. This is you can tell you're throwing these things off. <laughs> and 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 what's funny was that um, Tastes Like Music, which is a, a, a channel on YouTube with these uh, three guys, and mm -hmm. they did a ranking of Neil Young. And it's funny, they keep talking about how they're completely disillusioned with Neil Young after doing that ranking. Like they said, I could barely listen to him because they listened to every record in succession. And they said they were so burnt out on Neil Young. It was like incredible. And they, they still talk about it. It's funny um, because the, there's a lot of stuff as much as there's a lot of brilliance. There's also a lot of just you're not excited. You put out records you're not excited about. Um, and I remember the first one that I bought where I listened to it and I went, ah. Oh, this isn't the same was Greendale. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember buying that album and being like, let's putting it on. And I was like, I'm just not into this at all. Like this isn't just, there's like one song on there that I liked. Um, <laughs> so, and then also in, in addition, I'm going on and on, but the last thing mm -hmm. I'm going to say is in addition, he would also say, I've got all these records that are unreleased that are amazing from the seventies. I've got all this stuff. I'm going to put out this amazing box set. I can't wait. And it was like archives volume one. And he kept typing this archives. Oh, they're working on the archives. It's going to be so amazing. So much stuff you've never heard before. Oh my God. It's going to be unbelievable. I was like all hyped for it. And then he put it out. It was like three quarters of it was like previous release stuff. And you're like, what is this? Like you were hyping this, like it was going to be this gold mine of, of stuff. And it was like, I was so disappointed with that. So anyway uh, well neil young's fan bases they like whatever he gives them yeah and you have think, to admit um, you might not like all of it but yeah. he does what he does yeah he can do what he's he an wants. artist he, he can, can do, do what, what he wants. wants i know um but i think in the 90s also wasn't he seen as like the godfather of grunge and that kind of helped elevate him yeah he did an album with pearl jam yeah and that yeah. kind of helped elevate him maybe when to a higher status than maybe he would have not have had maybe grunge not come along and cited him as such an influence. I saw him in 91. It was Sonic Distortion and then Sonic Youth and Neil Young and Crazy Horse. And Neil Young and Crazy Horse fit right in. Yeah, you I could saw put that him right though. alongside Sonic Youth yeah. and everything just blended together. That was a good tour. I saw that tour. It that was, was good. a good tour. And and I still love Neil. Don't get me wrong. I still love Neil Young. I still love, but he just he's he's kind of exasperating if you're a fan sometimes. That's all. Hmm. Yeah. I still dig Neil. Yeah, there's not everything I like. I like, but you know, I don't have everything either. So <laughs> and I don't listen to it. Yeah, those guys, if they're gonna rank the catalog, can you imagine to rank listen to that? every album? Listen to every one of them. Hmm. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that, That's a bit might, much. Might, might have to like lock yourself in your room for a couple of days or something to do that. I don't know. <laughs> he, he, yeah. he is the he is one of the very few artists left who hasn't um, put anything on 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 streaming platforms. Right? He's he's still resisting the. Uh, no, I think, I, think, I think he went back. I think he. So. I think. I think he's it. back. Oh, is he yeah. doing it? Okay. He boycotted yeah, he it, but again. yeah, I think okay. Neil likes money. He likes a check. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah but his his brilliance well, that... in the 70s his i mean it's brilliant like i love all those albums and then then it just you know anyway he, he does it's, it's it's an admirable that he does what he wants but it just i'm just saying from a fan standpoint sometimes you're like wow he's just doing whatever he wants whenever he wants he's a millionaire music he can just do whatever he's got his own studio he can just hit re and everything yeah. every anything that comes into his mind he's like yeah okay i'm hit record i'm let's go i'll make an album in like two in a day you know and put yeah. it out yeah, and I don't think he spends much time on these records. No. Calls Crazy Horse, let's rehearse, let's record it. All right, we're done. Yeah, it's done in like a week. <laughs> done in like a week. All right, well. <laughs> but you have to hand it to him. He still He's still doing it. So. Yeah, he is. He is. That's a good one. All right. Oh. The Elder of Rock. What? Give us something. All right. Well, this might be low-hanging fruit as of late, but I'm going to say Motley Crue. <laughs> um, I'm really disillusioned by them, especially when they came out of their retirement. Um, but, you know, the the, uh, the performances, especially from Vince Neil, have been very dismal. I don't know why people accept this. I mean, they don't, they're only going to keep playing if people keep buying tickets and people are must be fine with seeing Vince Neil get up there and, you know, stagger his way through songs and 
okay with possible lip syncing. I mean, you know, that's reported widely. It's not like it's a secret and people are still showing up for the concerts. And I, I don't know why I'm, and I'm just, like I said, I'm very disillusioned by them to keep going and giving us this inferior product. There's supposedly a new album coming out. It's very skeptical of whether it's any of them playing on it, that if it's all AI. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. AI. well, John, John <laughs> five, I'm sure is playing on it. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's playing on it, but it's like, it's, there's, there's questionable as whether Vince Neil is vocals are really on it. I myself not, haven't bothered to listen not. to it because I'm I don't I'm afraid to listen to it. They're not. <laughs> he doesn't sound like he tries very hard. I'll just leave. But, it. but, but definitely you know, it not. Makes, I mean, it makes for great comedy material. You know, I mean, the, the videos with him, like with with the weird, like people putting weird lyrics over what he's supposed yes. to say. <laughs> I just I laugh out loud. With is, that. Are they saying no, at least it's publicity? Are they going with uh, any publicity is good publicity thing? I don't know. But it just seems like, you know. I don't get it. And it's not just them. He's not the only singer either. That's kind of getting like, they're, you know, there's other singers out there that are the same way. They're kind of like just half assing it through shows and people are still showing up and listening to him, though. And I, I don't know why I would rather see a guy up there that will do justice to the material. But I guess, you know, yeah, I mean, it'd probably be hard to sell tickets to a Motley Crue concert if Vince Neil's not singing. So I don't know. Yeah, because they tried. They tried that with what's his name? John Karabi. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was a while ago. But yeah. And that was more of a I don't know if they were. I know what you mean. Yeah. And yeah, people wouldn't accept it. I know. Yeah. Accept it, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And it's just one of those things where I don't I just don't get it, though. Why you accept it? Well, especially the money they're charging. I mean, it's not like I they're know. playing at clubs. You know, they're playing stadiums. They're charging this money and it's their icons. People want to see them. Yeah. I just I just, you know. That's the thing, like people like Neil Young and Motley Crue, they have already a cultural status as well in certain mm -hmm. parts That's of the true. world. You know? That's true, yeah. Yeah, they've already got a name, right? They've already yeah, got a name. Yeah, and I guess Motley Crue is synonymous with like going to a stadium and listening to rock where you could drink beer too and take your girl with you and, and just like have a good time. And I don't know. But the thing is, is that that's like older audience. Like, you know, I'm older. I, you know, I grew up with Motley Crue and... um you would think, I mean, there's people that age, but then there's people, newer people still going too. you know, there's younger mm -hmm. audiences still discovering and wanting to go see that and being okay with that too. So I don't know. Yeah. It's like, it's more the mentality of someone just going, yeah, I'm going to see crew, man. And it doesn't yeah. matter. Just, it's going to see Motley Crue. I'm excited. I don't, it's yeah, like, yeah. okay. Yeah. You say I, that I, like I, that I, and your kids uh, stare at you like, what? Right. Oh, right. <laughs> they aren't listening to I, that. I wouldn't mind seeing John Five though, and actually, I think he's wasting his talent. Obviously, I do a, too. Yeah, he's an interesting shredder. He's an interesting guitar player. Like he's got Very a good guitar player. interesting tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, and maybe he's too good for Motley Crue. But then there's I think so oh, too. Well. I, he was almost yeah. too good for Rob Zombie, but he ended up doing some interesting things in that as well. But but uh, he's liking the paycheck though. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. He's big in that tour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, you can't you can't deny that he's probably getting some good money and yeah. definitely good exposure for his own career, his own sort yeah. of thing. Right. Yeah. It's it's a good move on his behalf. You know? Oh yeah. He, yeah. He's and, too good of a player for it, but that's okay. Hey, whatever. <laughs> and it's really annoying when when many of these um, uh, legacy bands they say that they will release a new album and it just takes years and years, and then you're like. Are these guys guys just pulling our leg? Are they just is this just a joke for them? Like new album? When? Where? How? <laughs> yeah. Some of them though deliver. That some of that them Scorpions do. album was great. Mm -hmm. That took oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Scorpions. Okay. Um, you know, Judas Priest Boys last one was pretty good. I yeah, thought Judas Priest wasn't that wasn't bad. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. Um, so there are some bands that can still put out some good albums. Sticks, yeah, the last I mean, two sticks the albums sticks, were killing. Yeah. 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 Sticks. What, is, what, is, what happened to right? Sticks? Like, wow, it's amazing, right? They, <laughs> it's like, well, like some now, people, now they now they so, put out some really good stuff, right? Been there for some people complain, no, oh, it's just a Tommy Shaw solo album, but I don't. I, I, when you go see them, they seem more of a like a band, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I disagree with the whole Tommy Shaw thing, but if you're if Dennis isn't in the band, you got Tommy Shaw. Of course, people say they should let Lawrence do more. I don't know. Who so, knows? Well, there's another. There's a band you see now. Dennis DeYoung is an iconic singer for that band. Right. But people still show up to see. I mean, so and maybe it's because at the time it happened and they were at a downturn and then they came back and people thought they had 
broken up, but they come back with this guy that sounds like Dennis DeYoung and they're, and people are accepting of it pretty much. I mean, you know, yeah, well, that's, but they that's sound another, great. That's a whole nother topic, right? Where like Eddie Trunk talks <laughs> well, about that all the time, where it's like, people don't care who's in the band anymore, which is so weird. Like when we were younger, it was like, you cared. It, it wasn't like people mm-hmm. these days don't seem to care as much. Who's in it's like, but they oh, do well. though. I mean, cause of Motley Crue, I mean, you know, Motley, they care who's in Motley Crue. Yeah, I think if they had Vince, like you said, Vince Neil, you know, if they had oh, somebody else. Point. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's at the time of the band, maybe at the, that the change happened because <clears throat> we've heard of Sticks for a long time. I mean, we, you know, obviously we follow them, but the general public doesn't follow them. They know them at probably the last hit as being Renegade or something. Mm-hmm. And they come back right, and right, and they right. probably just don't. Oh, okay, here's Sticks again. And well, they're they not are. playing stadiums either. What they're about just, Journey? Playing stadiums right. either. They're playing yeah, Journey's in the clubs. One. Yeah. yeah, who's really left? Just Neil Schoen, right? But Kansas is a great, great one. Like Kansas with their current lineup, they're doing uh-huh. great stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. tell you somebody, I, now that we're on this topic that I kind of got disillusioned by, and I didn't pay money to go see him, but when Van Halen reunited without Ma- Michael Anthony and they had Wolfgang playing bass, oh, yeah. and yeah. David Lee Roth's back, and David Lee Roth, he sounds great when he records stuff in the studio. And what made me think of that is that he's been putting out these tracks. Have you heard any of these tracks that he's just been throwing yeah. out there oh, on yeah. YouTube? That's what that my other people I was disillusioned by. But, but yeah, he I, sounds just as good as he always has when he's singing in the studio. But you yeah. listen to him live, like on that those later tours, it's like, Jesus. Well, yeah. you, you listen to any of the being Van disillusioned. Yeah. Those poor people yeah. that paid money. Of course, they're probably paying money just to see Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, yes. but... that's a lot of it too. You're seeing it. You're paying to see Eddie. I mean, uh, Eddie was still great on that tour. I saw that tour, yeah. and okay. Eddie was still great. Yeah. Yeah, but but you're right. Roth was not. <laughs> Roth, was Roth not. but Roth has really never been for a long time. I mean, when I saw no. Roth, I saw him on Diver Down, and I've seen him in you know solo a couple times. Okay. You know, it, he's always sort of like hit or miss. He's he just loose. Kind of does what he feels. Yeah. A little yeah. too loose. But what I heard, like recent stuff that he's put out, that he's, I don't know if he's going to put a record out, but I've liked what I've heard. Well, there was acoustic stuff he studio. did with John Five a long time ago. Yeah, sounds fine. And yeah, and uh, that's coming out. But he, he also did these re recordings of Van Halen songs, which I didn't understand. And those didn't sound bad either. Yeah, but I just don't understand why he was doing them. I mean, <laughs> I yeah. Well, yeah. Well, there's a, you're putting out a song that doesn't have Eddie Van Halen playing on it. That I mean, you're just, what do you, you know, the guitar player's going to play the solo better. You're going to sing it better than the original. I didn't, I just didn't. Maybe it. Dave's trying to prove that he can still bring it. Maybe he can't bring it live, but he can bring it in the studio. I don't well, know. That's cool. Yeah. Well, what did you, what do you guys think of different kind of truth? I liked it. I liked, I liked I it, it for the most good. part. Yeah. I thought it was, well, I think I that was a was great good. record. And even they had a live album they put out after that, uh, live at Tokyo or whatever, with David Lee Roth. I never heard some people didn't like it. I thought it was, you know, it's pretty good. It's 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 a it's a Van Halen live record, and that's what you get. And so, uh, you know, some of the musicianship on it was really good. Um, So, but David Lee Roth, yeah, he's kind of all over the place, but that's just the way he's always been. I think. Yeah. Yeah. For that. When he's good, well, that's why Sammy Hagar is, is is the better one in the end. Yeah, Sammy Hagar's always brought it. He's actually a better. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. He can yeah. still deliver. He still the does good. too. Yeah, he still sounds pretty good. But mm-hmm. there's something about Roth in that band that was magic. When he, I, I don't know. Well, when he was younger, and of course yeah. he cloned Jim Dandy pretty much, but he right. was the greatest. <laughs> you got. He was the greatest frontman of all time. Yeah. Yeah. He was he, he was phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah he was. Jim Dandy clone, but you know, he pushed that Jim Dandy thing. Yeah, I never forget the first further. time seeing David Lee Roth and just being like, oh my I mean, you know, look at all the people here tonight and uh, you know, and just making you feel like you were mm-hmm. just this part of this big party they're playing, and then you just felt like you walk out of that concert and you just felt like ten feet tall and it was just great. Yeah, he was awesome. I, I I remember one of my friends saying that David Lee Roth was almost like a he was like one of those guys you see like, hey kid, come over here. You want to see something cool? <laughs> yeah, like, you know he's like that. You mean Sebastian vibe. Bach? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sounds like someone dangerous who's trying to lure you in. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right well we might as well keep going we can't we can't get any looser than this i don't we think. are loose well, today all right loose, Philip, give us something else yeah okay uh well the other one is is uh would be paired with another episode i was on a few months ago where we talked about metallica's black album and yeah i totally have fallen out of love with metallica uh it's uh it started a few years ago and basically now it's like you know the judge has put the has put his hammer down and 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 the divorce is over i i just can't take them anymore um looking back there are moments on that those four first records that i still think are great uh i don't doubt for a second the impact and the influence of metallica on so many bands and artists and and just you know the the, the james hetfield's right hand has been so important for so many guitar players who want to do down picking and learn how to play master of puppets mm-hmm. um yeah and to do it with down picking right and and that's the only takeaway for me from metallica in the end the energy that is brought from that down down picking that is the secret to playing thrash metal to 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 playing something that is ener- full of energy and aggression and and angst whatever you want to call it um but when i hear metallica today i hear all the time the same chords they are stuck in their patterns i hear the same you know diabolus in musica flat five uh, uh pattern um they, they do the same riffs on and on and on i can <laughs> learn i can learn their songs like almost all their songs in my head not because i'm some kind of amazing guitar player but because after a while their shtick is kind of obvious it's 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 kind of clear what patterns they are following uh kirk hammett as a solo player does two or three things very well and that's it i don't consider him anymore someone who is very good like we said earlier about about fripp uh oh god i'm not comparing hammett to fripp whatever but like hammett doesn't improve with time he becomes worse and worse and 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 the worst of all he becomes lazier like the new album, supposedly all the solos were improvised, like, you know, on the spot with whatever kind of soul I'm bringing on the moment. But all his solos are just some run of the mill pentatonic uh, runs, which are boring. And the wah pedal, oh my God, just please stop with the wah pedal. I can't stand it anymore. Even solos <laughs> from the past, which don't have a wah pedal, have, and um, 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 concerts have a wah. So even when I hear their, their stuff from the past even from master of puppets i don't feel the same way anymore i don't i like james hetfield when he's aggressive with his voice but when he goes into his sort of redneck thing with the yeah and the whatever yeah yeah i i just can't like I, there was a there was a turning point where his voice and his style of singing became more country i don't know why and he incorporated <laughs> that and i just can't unhear it again and it just continues and continues and after a while i'm like just no more and and you know you 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 hear other bands from that genre you know you hear megadeth you hear testament overkill and like these guys are playing stuff that's more complex more rich more interesting they renew themselves they experiment with things that are interesting and cool alex skolnick of testament is a jazz guitar player he has a jazz ensemble for crying out loud like guys work on your instruments become better guitar players better drummers don't don't become lazy as you get older you know it's understandable but like but who who cares like their concerts are selling out and they have they're playing like stadium arenas yesterday or the day before yesterday they were playing in munich at a stadium arena that was like packed mm-hmm. so like yeah. with Monday crew people will go to see them younger people and older people so who am i to judge yeah 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 i agree well, with I you, can... the metallica I, I tried listening to that metallica record the last one the new one a few mm-hmm. times i put it away but I haven't, and I just can't get into it. It just n- doesn't seem very inspired. I don't know. It just, yeah, it's like you said, lazy. You know. Yeah, I've heard mixed reviews on that record from fans. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe there's one uh, like Lux Eterna, the lead single they put out. I thought that was good, and I thought, oh, good, there's hope here, but. Any, I don't know. Just after that, it was kind of like. Hey. But even that, it's like, guys, you are just doing your usual, very like more distorted and 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 faster Motorhead. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do something else. Yeah. 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 
And and it isn't it like the last two records they put out were like double albums basically. I mean they're really oh long. my god they are like they're like dream theater records they're yeah. so long what the hell yeah that's the other thing I mean they're kind of long uh, but in comparison like Megadeth put out a record I think in 2022 or at the Antel or I think it was um, and that was really good I like I mean that was like uh, you know I didn't know what to expect I thought oh here's another Megadeth record and I was blown away by it and I, you compare it to the latest Metallica it's like you know, maybe it's because Dave gets new players in all the time and it's inspiring, but I yeah, don't know. Yeah, but you see Metallica, Master of Puppets was on Stranger Things, and that just yep. catapulted yeah. that song to yeah. the top. That's true, know? yeah. Yeah, my, when my kids know the song, you're like, wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mainstream. Kate Bush running up the hill. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Kate Bush. That too. When was the last time they played Running Up the Hill? Probably 1986. And then and then all of a sudden I heard it on radio, like regular radio here, like top 40 radio. It was mm -hmm. Kate Bush running up that hill, you know? It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, totally brought her back to life. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can hardly wait to see the comments below. Oh, yeah, right. This oh, I'm may gonna get, set... I'm going to get ripped for Neil Young, man. This Bang. may set the internet on fire. Mm. Cool. <laughs> all right. I'm, all right. Well, all right, Tom. I' looking forward to what you've got next. Oh boy. Um. Well, I got to be honest. Again, these are I'm, I'm t these are sacred cows, but I'm like, I, I and sacrifice I sacrifice them. These are these are bands <laughs> that I love. Like when I was younger, I loved them. And I loved. I still love Neil Young. I still love these bands, but they just don't have the same luster for me. And that one of them is is the Who. Like mm -hmm. I I still love the Who. But mm -hmm. like, I don't know, like if you look at their output from like, I mean, they, they're they again, it's like the, another thing where they had brilliance throughout a certain period. And then, you know, like I bought It's Hard and 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 Face Dances when they came out and I loved them then. I, I was like, oh, The Who, I love new album. I'm so excited. And, you know, and I listen to them now and I'm like, eh, they're OK. You know, they're all right. Um, they're not as good as Pete Townsend's, you know, Empty Glass and, uh, you know. Uh, every all the best cowboys have Chinese eyes. <clears throat> I think he was saving his best material for those records. Um, that's just my mm -hmm. opinion. I love White City too. Um, but uh, but you know, and I love Pete Townsend. I love him as a writer. I just think that like you know the whole like first the farewell tour was in 1981, right? And then they just kept all that. Yeah, I saw and that then one. they just they just which <laughs> did you which, did you like it? Was it a good show? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. I thought what you know. Um... Very, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, so it sounds like the Who. Yeah, no, it's cool. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, I like Eminence Front. I like some of those. Uh -huh. Athena, I like some of that stuff. You know, I. But it's just like you know, then the Endless Wire and the they start. They kept putting out albums like randomly, kind of. I, I don't know. I just get, was less excited about every release that came out. You know, Martin loves Endless Wire. Oh, does he? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. I'm yeah, going to stop talking. Just now. wait, Tom. I'm going to get ripped apart on this but one. I like face dances quite a bit because a lot of like you better, you better, you bet. It's not yeah. much mm -hmm. different than substitute or any of those pop singles that they did in the mid sixties. It's yeah. right along those lines. And a lot of those tracks, if you put sixties production on it, it would fit kind of in that whole era. Yeah. Um, but I never was into it's hard. I think yeah. eminence fronts brilliant. Mm-hmm. Athena's all right, but I only really like Eminence Front off that record. Yeah, maybe there's also an issue with like the that that burnout that you guys were that was discussed a few weeks mm -hmm. ago as well. You know, like you're burnt out with the hits and radio. Yeah. yeah, who was one of those bands I could listen to all the time, and I really don't go back and listen to it because a lot of that's yeah. in my memory. Like Todd Rundgren and Utopia, I listened to so much of that. Yeah, I could talk it, but how often do I really pull it out and listen to it? Because I played it so much. Yes. That and what's another? Steely Dan. Holy shit, in the 80s, I played the shit out of Steely Dan. And I really never pull it out anymore. I still like it. I like Todd Runger and Utopia. I don't have any problem with any of that stuff, but it is ingrained. And I never really have to pull it out unless we're doing a show. And I have, plus, I don't have to listen to it. I already know it. But uh, yeah now that's, i don't know where i was going that's well that's the what kind of the way i feel about the who it's the same yes. thing I used, to, I used to listen to them all the time and that do i pull out an album and listen to them and i haven't done that I in a while i haven't a long either. time yeah <clears throat> wow 
it's but maybe sad. I need to now. Maybe I, maybe this is a, a wake up call. I need to like now the Beatles. Up. I still will play it, <laughs> but you know a lot of those old bands like that. I mean, you know, I oh, it's weird, but those three: Steely Dan, Todd Rundgren, and the Who. I don't ever pull out anymore. It's weird. Yeah. Everything else I tend to pull out, but I can't explain it. Anyway, that's that's my that's another the choice. Who, ironically. Well, you're on the right channel for this, so. All right. I'm contrarian. All right, the Elder of Rock. All right. Well, this kind of uh yeah, this is maybe kind of obvious and you probably all will agree with this. Uh but Ozzy Osbourne mm. um I don't really like like anything he's done his last few albums. Probably I last album I kind of liked was uh Down to Earth. I thought that was okay, but uh I don't know. Ever since uh, he let Sharon replace the uh, bass and drums on Diary of a Madman and Blizzard a long time ago, yeah, I've been pretty disillusioned by Ozzy. Um, his last couple albums have just seemed like another kind of computer generated, put together thing. Very corporate. I was really disappointed with the last album because I had all these different players. You know, Jeff Beck was on it, and uh, Tony Iommi was on it, and Zach Wild was on it, and it was like, yeah. It just sounds pieced together. They weren't, you know, because it it was done separately. You know, you could tell it was done separately. Everybody was doing their tracks separately. They weren't in a room mm -hmm. jamming together. Ozzy did his tracks separately. They were probably pasted together, you know, yep. line by line. And so, uh, you know, I've just so there. So that's another. That's yeah, another one for me. A lot of those Ozzy. big acts. I think that's how they put records together now, right? Yeah, I mean, probably. I, mean, I don't know. Six I think some albums. of them get in a room, and some of them will still get in a room and jam together and come up with stuff. You know, Dream Theater, I'm sure, does that. I'm sure, like you know, obviously they get together and they jam their parts out and work them out, and then, um, you know, and then record them. But just as far as like it's the songwriting process, I just feel like everybody's like, here it is, learn it, <laughs> for Ozzy. You know, here it is, learn it, or and then we'll we'll piece it together. You know. I'm just going to sing over it. Yeah. yeah. Crash so. of the Crown, they did that during COVID, and everybody phoned in their parts. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. it still yeah. sounds like a – I'll give I'll give them a pass because that's a great record. But, uh, yeah, Ozzy, you know, I think Sharon just props him up there. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, if I, and hopefully we never – I don't think we will ever see him perform live again, which I'm okay with, you know – um, I hope if he does go out there, I just think it's going to not be good. You know, um, yeah. Well, is it fair, is it fair to say that he's, do you think he's being pushed to do things? I don't think so. I, I, I maybe because I think he wants to do it, but maybe he's being maybe encouraged more than he should be. You know, I don't think he doesn't want to do it. I think Ozzy will always love doing performing and things like that. He always will want to do it, but I think he's just maybe being encouraged too much, but he does seem to be realizing that he can't do it. And in recent interviews, he's kind of said, I don't think I could do it live anymore, even though he has said he won't, maybe would like to do another last Black Sabbath show with Bill Ward. But I doubt if that will happen either. I just get the impression he'd rather sit at home and just hang out on the couch and listen to Rubber Soul. Is what I picture <laughs> and paint. He likes to paint. He does a lot of painting. Painting, he's listen to the Beatles. Yeah. yeah. And do his thing i don't think he yeah he's paid his dues for god's sake oh, yeah I, I mean he's doesn't you know i don't need to see i mean i've saw him live uh, quite a few times i saw him you know in his heyday and with solo hey you know saw his first couple solo tours and they were great yeah, i saw him at 86 yeah he was great uh, yeah uh, so. yeah no, i i saw black sabbath in 2005 and already there after one hour his voice would start breaking like mm. he would go yeah into, um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah yeah i saw the last uh black sabbath tour the t 13 whatever the end tour and uh yeah he his voice wasn't it wasn't good there either yeah you know, he was yeah. off key and i mean his vocals on those early sabbath records are so amazing too i mean it's how, definitely you know, yeah you know, oh, yeah, 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 that, was... that, that I'm not out of love with for sure. And yeah. the first solo albums, too. I mean, there's yeah, the first solo stuff, too. Yeah, yeah, he, he was good. I, I have um, a bootleg of uh, the Blizzard of Oz with Lee Kerslake and Bob Baisley, 
and a European tour, that first one they did. And he, he's like, he still sounds great. You know, he's yeah. sounding good. He still had fire then. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's it. And, you know, speaking of Aussie and Shredders as well, I mean, some some of these guys are really timeless and you cannot fall out of love with them. Speaking of like Randy Rhodes, right? I mean, uh -huh. as, yeah. I, as, I, as I would grow older, I would realize that the guy, the, the kind of guitar player for me in this un sort of heavy metal universe is Randy Rhodes. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and not not the, not so much Zach Wilde or, or or even Van Halen, you know, because like when you when I heard Eruption, it was like I realized now that it's basically someone who's just throwing all his tricks instantly in and just like playing them super fast and loud and like, hey, isn't this cool? Isn't that cool? And mm -hmm. okay. yeah, Randy seemed to be like the musician, a musician that just wanted to keep progressing. And it's a shame that he was taken from us because I, I, it yeah. really would have been interesting to see what he would yeah. have been doing yeah. now. Yeah. The only yeah. thing I never liked about Randy Rhodes is I never cared for his guitar tone at all. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. I always thought it sounds like he's paying like a PV or something. I don't know. Solid state <laughs> PV. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I just thought that. Nothing against PVs, because what's the one? Josh Homie from Yeah. He's Queens the guy Stone that Age. plays Stone Age. crap out of that really tiny PV amp that <laughs> gives you your special sound. <laughs> but nothing against PVs. I don't have a problem with them. But I always thought that Randy Rhodes sound sounded like a bad solid state amp. Huh. That's an interesting I, I can understand how you yeah. say that, yeah. It does, it does have a little Where bit of a... Eddie's sound, of course, you know, the brown... Yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah. His guitar sounds absolutely wonderful. Randy Rhodes was the exact opposite. Boy, I'm going to get hate mail. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm afraid to even post uh -oh. this episode. Well, well didn't... That's didn't... Grant Arthur. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't, oh uh, didn't like... Uh... Eddie Van Halen, speaking of Eddie and Randy Rhodes, didn't didn't he say like Randy Rhodes is kind of, or was that the right guitarist where he said, oh, he's he learned everything he from me? Yeah, he kind of, yeah, there's some kind well, of a thing, maybe, or saying like he's looks seems like he's doing uh, all my tricks or something. I yeah, don't yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, he was like one of the early guys after Van Halen that popped on the scene that. When yeah. I first heard Randy Rhodes, I said, oh, he's doing Eddie Van Halen. That's what yeah. yeah, supposedly the big bands were like, you go see it at, in, at the strip at that time were Van Halen and Quiet Riot. Maybe uh, I'll think Dawkins maybe have been there too. But uh, but yeah, it was definitely like um, those were the guitar players right there, you know, that were kind of yeah. big on the strip at that time. All right, we, we need got, to wrap this dog up. Then we got Steve Vai yeah. and Joseph Triani, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've criticized enough bands at this point. I know. Please let yeah. us know how you feel below. What and nobody mentioned player? Kiss, which is Yeah, good, Kiss. You know? I thought Kiss was coming I, up for sure. Uh, well, I think we all expect to be disillusioned by Kiss by now, I think. Yeah. I still wish I would have. <laughs> it's like if, <laughs> that's expected. I mean, that's expected yeah. by now by Kiss. You know, if they don't do something, I'm disappointed that they I'm don't. I'm glad play. I got Avatars. to see them in 98. Yeah. They're almost What's doing that? things to make sure that their fan base is disillusioned. Yeah, right. I'm glad <laughs> I got to see them in 98 because it was peter chris ace freely yeah and yeah. when we were watching them you know you could close your eyes and it sounded just like love gun or that mm -hmm. year it sounded like yeah. just like 78 kiss yeah. amazing and ace freely yeah, was, was a good sloppy tour, yeah. he played all of his you know he was coherent i suppose yeah but man it's not yeah. like he is now where he's very sloppy there he would play oh. all the solos it yeah. sounded like 1978 yeah. so i'm glad i got to see him then yeah yeah. yeah, that was a good tour. I saw that tour, yeah. Which tour now was that? Now you I'm can sorry. see their avatar. 98. 98, okay. Reunion tour. 98. All right. Yeah. It was great. A buddy yeah. of mine saw him on Dynasty. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, I never got to see Kiss back in their original makeup. First time I saw him was on Lick It Up. Mm -hmm. So. And, and you get so like, sick of them bickering and like rip, ripping on each other and just gets old. Yeah, and you know, and Ace... Ace also is kind of like, I always thought he was kind of a cool one, but now he's kind of disillusioned me too. The last uh, things coming out saying, oh, I'm going to talk shit about Paul if he doesn't, you know, apologize to me or something. And then it never happened. And I don't know. I so. think they just poked the bear at each other. Yeah. 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 I think he's got a record he, to you know, promote. Almost, huh? Ace has a new album out. He's got to yeah. promote it. <laughs> and the easiest way to promote it is to poke the bear. It's so yeah. true, Grant. That's so true. <laughs> so. You almost wonder if they call each other up and say, hey, you know, I'm going to do yeah. an interview and I'm going to put you down. So yeah. uh, and then you, you can get ready and we can keep our names in the press. That they way. all yeah, do cool. it. 
Yeah. It's just all about <laughs> this will get this will get headlines if I say this. Yeah. yeah. But I will say this to give Ace Freely some props. I do like that ten thousand volt song. <laughs> That's a yeah, good song. Yeah. I like it's that song. Catchy. It's memorable. Yeah. And Ace sounds alive on it. I'll give him that. Yeah. Cool. Maybe he should just play in the studio. I don't know. Sure thing with the Ace album, lately like is just his singing. You know, so I, yeah, I don't know about the album. his vocals. Yeah. You know, like he did on his solo album and his first mm-hmm. couple albums. You know, it's like he just sounds like he's kind of talking now. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> oh boy, we are going to oh, get so much. We're getting Uh-oh. trouble. We're going to we get in trouble. trouble. All right, gentlemen. I want to thank. We got a lot. We got to go around twice. It's fun. It's always fun just to have a good conversation about music. So deep then down in the comments, let us know how we are wrong, of course, and what bands or artists have you become disillusioned with. We kind of went into a guitar uh, excursion, but that's okay. It's fun to talk guitars. So uh, anyway, leave us, uh, if you like what you see, please like, subscribe. We have a Patreon. We have a Kofi. I don't think I need to go through the whole song and dance here, but we do have merch. Get yourself a damn shirt down below and uh, leave a comment. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank Philip, Tom, and the Elder of Rock. (laughs) Thanks for coming on. We will see you on the next one. (laughs) 